Hey fellow problem solvers, Colfax Math here. Today we're gonna go over a standardized math test. This is a SVAC high school exam. Uh, it's a standardized math test that's very similar to just about any other type of uh, standardized math test, whether you're entering a union, entering the military, police academy, they all have standardized math tests. The more you practice, the better you do at them. What you really wanna work on is working smarter, not harder, learning some of the tricks so you can do well on this standardized math exam or any standardized math exam. The SBAC is a Smarter Balance Assessment Consortium. It is a standardized math test for about 17 states or so. CAT portion is a California assessment test. All right, with that said, let's go ahead and get started. What I would do is I'd have a notebook in front of me and a pencil, pause the video, do the problem before I do it, and then unpause the video and then watch how I solve the problem. So on number one right here, select the expression that is equivalent to m squared minus 25. So if I don't know anything about that and I gotta come up with a solution, I just look at my answers. Well, if it's m squared minus 25, it can't be something different. I mean, it can't just automatically have some new numbers put in there. So that one makes no sense, that one makes no sense. And now I have two to choose from. Um, it looks similar to one or the other, and then from here I notice that both of these are perfect squares. m squared is a perfect square, and 25 is a perfect square. So I have to factor that as a perfect square into m minus 5, m plus 5. And then the check is to FOIL it out, where I multiply the first terms together to get m squared, the middle terms, negative 5m, the outer terms, plus 5m, so those middle terms cancel out, and then the last terms, negative 5 times 5 is negative 25. So answer C is the correct answer. Over to number 2 here, select an expression that is equivalent to this, the square root of 3 eighths. So if you think about it, and you, you don't remember those rules, you could say, well, what's the square root of 4 equal to? Well, you know that's equal to 2. And you could come up with that because 4 is 2 squared, and the square root of that is 2 right there. So the way I do this is this is the numerator of the fraction, this is the denominator. So this is equal to 2, 2 over 2, or 2 to the first or 2. So square root of 4 is 2. So I'm going to use that kind of discovery to solve this problem here. I have 3 to the 8th, and this is a square root. So it is to the power of 8 over 2. I could reduce that fraction to 3 fourths. And there's my correct answer, answer C right there. All right, next problem, write the expression equivalent to this. The rule here is if the bases are the same, so the bases are x, and the exponents are different or the same, you subtract them. So this is equal to x, m minus n. So that's the rule right here. The bases are the same, so I have b, 11 minus 4 is 7, so this is equal to b to the 7th which inequality represents all possible solutions. As I look at that problem, I know there's a little bit of a trick to it, so I'm thinking about it, and I remember that trick. It's when I divide or multiply by a negative, I have to switch that sign, so that less than sign becomes greater than when I divide by a negative. Negative 6n divided by negative 6 is n. That thing switched, negative 12 divided by negative 6 is 2, n is greater than 2. Okay, over to this problem. Click on the region of the graph that contains the solution set for the system of equations. So y is less than negative 1 half x plus 3. So that has to be this line right here. It has a y-intercept of 3. So that thing goes right through 3. From 3, it rises. Negative 1 runs 2. So it goes like that. So that's that line. It is less than or equal to it. So it's everything below that line. Let me just double check that. I'll pick a point in that solution set, like 0, 0, and plug it in. 0 would have to be less than or equal to negative 1 half times 0. 0 plus 3. Is 0 less than or equal to 3? Yes, it is, so I shaded that correctly. And then the other graph, y is greater than or equal to 2x minus 2. That's this line right here with the y-intercept of negative 2. From there, rise to 2 runs 1, rise to 2 runs 1. It is greater than or equal to that, so it's everything above it. Same thing. Here's a point right here, 0, 0. I'll try that in my solution set. 0. Oops, pen's not working. 
zero is greater than or equal to zero times two, zero minus two is zero greater than or equal to negative two. Yes, it is, so I shaded that correctly. And then the correct answer is where they are shaded together. So the blue solutions above here, the red solution down here, the intersection is this quadrant right here. So that's my answer right there. All right, let's take a look at this triangle problem right here. Can enter the ratio equivalent to sine of b. Well, the way I remember my three trig ratios is this right here, so ka toa. And that's a mnemonic device to remember sine is equal to the opposite of a hypotenuse. Cosine is a ratio of the adjacent over hypotenuse. Tan, the ratio opposite over adjacent. So if we're talking about angle B right here, and we're talking about sine, what is the ratio of the opposite over the hypotenuse? So opposite would be 21, hypotenuse 29, uh, and that's the ratio equivalent to sine of B. This is a right triangle, I have two legs and one hypotenuse, hypotenuse always opposite the right angle. All right, here's a bit of a reasoning problem here. When a transversal intersects a pair of parallel lines, it creates two pairs of alternate exterior angles. So what I'm saying is I got parallel lines, usually denoted with like double arrows, transversal cutting it. Alternate means opposite, exterior is on the outside of the parallel line. So I got these alternate exterior angles here, and I know they're congruent. Ricky claims the angles within each pair are congruent to each other, but not congruent to either angle in the other pair. So we're saying these are congruent to each other, but not congruent to this pair right here. It's really like a word problem, more English decoding than math. Draw a transversal through the point that supports Ricky's claim or select none. Well, this case right here is true. These two are congruent, but I could see this one's bigger than that one. So these two are not congruent. So one solution through that point would be that way. So that's part A. Part B, draw a transversal through the point that refutes, refutes means opposes Ricky's claim or select none. Well, what I want is I want to say that these two are congruent and these two are congruent. And the only way that's going to happen is a perpendicular line. So I draw my transversal perpendicular. This would be right. This would be right. They would be congruent. This linear pair would also um, be right, right, because they add up to 180, and they would be congruent. So this is a case for part A that shows he's right, and this is disproving his claim. OK, let's take a look at this problem. A train travels 250 miles, that's a distance, at a constant speed, x. That's uh, miles per hour, so that's a rate. Enter an equation that can be used to find the speed of the train if the time to travel 250 miles in five hours. So rate times time equals distance. And that kind of makes sense, because I have a rate of miles per hour times a time, say, in hours. And these would cancel, and that would be equal to a distance miles. So we have a rate of x miles per hour. Let's keep our units in here. So x miles per hour times our time of five hours. And that should be equal to a total of 250 miles. So there's an equation right there to represent that scenario. All right, let's take a look at this problem right here. It's a sequence problem. The first five terms are these right here. So what I'm saying here is this is my first term, my second term, my third term, my fourth term, my fifth term. I'm going to just kind of look at those numbers to start with and say what's going on. Well, I'm adding an amount each time. It looks like a constant increase. I can see I'm adding a certain amount. I'm going to go to right here to the positive numbers and start with the integers. To go from two to three and a quarter, I could see I'm adding one and a quarter. So let me go to the previous one and see if that works. 0.75 plus one and a quarter is two. That does. Add one and a quarter here. That works. I could see this is my relationship. Glancing down at my answers here, there are no decimals. They're all fractions. I'm going to change that into an improper fraction. That's going to say I'm adding one and one quarter or five quarters. So I'm adding five quarters every time. 
So let's see if we can figure something out here. This n value is not the actual value, it is a number value. So again, I'm going to work with these right here. I'm just going to take that n and plug it in and see if it works on any of these. So I'm going to take n right here, my fourth value. 4 minus 1 is 3. 3 times 5 fourths is 15 fourths minus 7 fourths is equal to 8 fourths, which is equal to 2. So when I plug in the fourth value, I should get 2. Oh, and I do. Well, there it is. I was, I was actually just lucky. <laughs> so we could, I was going to go through a process of elimination. Let me try that one again. Let's plug 4 in here. 4 minus 1 is 3. 3 times 7 is 21 fourths minus 5 fourths. Well, that should be equal to 16 fourths. So my fourth value should be equal to 4, and it's not. So I can see that one does not work. Uh, I'll pick this one, too. Again, I'm going to stay with that integer. So my fourth value, 2, is going to be the easiest. I'm going to plug 4 in here. 28 fourths minus 5 fourths. I have a common denominator. That's going to give me 23 fourths. Uh, what is that? 5 and 3 quarters. That's not going to work either. So the first one I randomly picked the plug in was the correct one. Uh, just remember n is a number of terms, and that f of n is the actual value of them. OK, here we have a bar graph. Click above the numbers to create a line plot for the given percent chance of rain in different cities. So 65, I have 1, 2. 1, 2, 70, I have two values of 70. 1, 2, 3, 4, four values of 80. 1, 2, 2, 3, 4, one value of 85, three values of 95, and then one value of 100. This is really an exercise just on keeping track of data. All right, let's take a look at this word problem right here. It's kind of a long, complex problem. Store sells U's in new video games, so I'm going to call that U and N. New video games cost more than used video games. Well, there's a surprise. All used video games cost the same. All new video games cost the same, so a couple disclaimers there. Omar spent a total of $84, so Omar spent 84 on four used video games and two new video games. Sally spent a total of $78 on six used video games and one new video game. Well, now I got two equations, two variables I could solve right there. Uh, a couple ways to solve for the number or the price of the used and new video games is linear combinations. Combine the two equations, get one variable to drop out, or substitution. I think I'm going to take this second equation here, multiply it by a negative 2 on both sides, and then get rid of those two ends. So I'm going to multiply this by negative 2 to get negative 12u, negative 2n. Then over here, 1, 4, what is that? Negative 156. So I'm combining that top equation with this bottom one now, right? And then I'm going to see my 2n and negative 2n is going to drop out. So I've got 4u minus 12u, negative 8u. Again, my n's drop out. And 84 and negative 156, what is that? 70, negative 72. Divide both sides by negative 8. And u is equal to negative 72 divided by negative 8, 9. So I got a value for u. <clears throat> Take that value for u, plug it into either equation. I'll just plug it in here. It'll be the easiest. 6 times u, 6 times 9, 54 plus 1n is equal to 78. Subtract 54 from both sides. And n is equal to, what is that, 24. OK, so now we have the num how much a used video game is and how much a new video game is. Let's see if we can figure out Janet's deal here. Enter the number of used video games Janet can purchase after she purchased three new video games. So she bought three new video games at 24 bucks. So 24 times 3 is $72. So she got $72. Yeah. 
Pen's not working. So she spent 72 of her 120. So I'm going to take 120 minus that 72, and that's going to give me $48. So she has $48 left to buy used video games, right? Enter the number of used video games she can purchase. So 9 does not go into 48 evenly. It goes in there 5 times 45 with 3 left over. Um, so she's just got to take that $3 home. It's not going to be an even number. So the correct answer is going to be 5. All right, our next one, use the circle below to answer the question. Um, the circle is centered at point C, so that's the diameter. Line segment PQ, line segment, that line right there, is parallel to SR. That's what those double arrows mean as well. What's the measure of angle QPS? QPS, so we want to know this angle here. Well, that's going to be an isosceles trapezoid, meaning the base angles are equal. So these two are going to have to both be 68. And then this one up here, as is this one right here, will have to be the supplement of that one. So 180 minus 68 is 112 degrees. So the measure of QPS, 112 degrees. All right, choose the ordered pair that is solution to the equation represented by the graph. So I guess there's a couple questions right there. The first question is, what is the equation for the graph? So y equals mx plus b is where we'll start. That's our general equation. And then if we could solve for slope and y-intercept, we'll have our specific equation. It crosses the y-intercept at 2, so this is plus 2. And then the slope is rise over run. Let's see if we find some integers here. There's an exact point in there. So it rises 2, runs 3. So y equals 2 thirds x plus 2. There's the equation of the graph. What point down here is going to hold true? I do like picking zeros because they're quick. I'll pick that. That is an x. That is a y. I'll plug it in for x, y, and see if it's true. Or I could just actually look at the graph. Over 0, up negative 3. Well, that clearly doesn't work. Over 2, up 0. That's not on there. Over 2, up 2. That's not on there. Over negative 3, up 0. That looks like it. I'm just going to verify by picking that point and plug it in. When x is negative 3 and y is 0, this should hold true. So 2 thirds times negative 3 plus 2 should equal 0. 2 thirds times negative 3, those cancel to give me negative 2 plus 2. 0 equals 0. If I were to take this value right here and square it, right, so if I take this whole thing and square it, it would be square root of 3 squared is 3, square root of 2 squared is 2. That is a rational number, so that would be the answer here. I'd drag this one over here. What squared would stay irrational. Well, pi, or square root of pi, um, pi is irrational, so you could just drag that one over there, and that would stay irrational. All right, we have another rate problem. Uh, the formula for rate, which water is flowing, rate is equal to volume over time. R is rate, V is volume in gallons. So this is going to be gallons. And time is second. So our flow rate is gallons per second. Uh, select the appropriate measurement unit for the rate. Well, it's volume over time, so gallons over second. Answer B right there. All right, here's a little bit of algebra right here. Emily's solving this equation. Her steps are shown. Click on the first step in which she made an error. So before I even start, I'm looking over here, and I know the first thing I'm going to do is distribute. So let's see if Emily did that. Takes that 2 and distributes it through the quantity to get 2x plus 18 is equal to 4x plus 28 plus 2. That's correct. My next order is I'm going to combine similar terms. 2x plus 18 is equal to 4x. 28 plus 2 is not 26. So there's her error right there. Part B, click on the solution to Emily's original equation. So I think what that means is solve this incorrectly. So instead of this being 26, it should be a 30. Then I'm going to get my terms together. I'll subtract 2x from both sides to get 2x over here. And then I'm going to subtract 30 from both sides. 18 minus that 30 is negative 12. 2x is equal to negative 12. Divide both sides by 2 and x is equal to negative 6. There's my correct answer there.